The number of Japanese in China about to fall to lowest level in nearly 20 years. Monthly salary of graduates in China's industry dropped by 70%. Chinese car manufacturers in a continuous shutdown, difficulty in car repairs may become the norm. Collaboration with CCP to remove banned apps? Experts, Apple's nightmare won't end here. US blacklists 42 Chinese entities for aiding Russia's defense industry. It's all covered in today's China Truths. The number of Japanese in China about to fall to lowest level in nearly 20 years. Over the past decade, the number of Japanese residents in China has consistently declined. In 2012, there were 150,000 Japanese in China, but the figure is now on the verge of dropping below 100,000, marking the lowest level in nearly 20 years. According to the survey statistics on the number of Japanese nationals abroad from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan, in 2022, there were 102,066 Japanese residents in China, reflecting a 5.2% decrease from 2021. In 2021, there had already been a 3.6% decline from the previous year, with only 107,715 Japanese residents. If this trend continues, the number of Japanese in China is expected to fall below 100,000 in 2023, which would be the first time in about 20 years, considering that it exceeded 100,000 in 2005. The turning point in this decline can be traced back to 2012 when there were 150,000 Japanese residents in China. However, in 2013, the number dropped significantly by 10% compared to 2012 due to anti-Japanese demonstrations in China that resulted in damage to Japanese businesses. The reasons for this decrease include Sino-Japanese relations, pandemic prevention and control, the Counter-Espionage Act, the difficulties of Japanese car companies in China, and the discharge of Fukushima nuclear wastewater. For example, recently, the Chinese Communist Party has implemented a revised version of the Counter-Espionage Law, which has increased the concerns of the Japanese. Reports say that since the spring of this year, it has become increasingly common for Japanese people stationed in China to discuss the Counter-Espionage Act whenever they meet. Monthly salary of graduates in China's IT industry dropped by 70%. The business environment for Chinese internet companies continues to deteriorate, and many related companies have gone bankrupt due to a lack of orders. According to IT Orange data, from 2013 to last year, more than 25,000 new economy companies closed down in China. According to incomplete statistics, a total of 3,378 internet companies in China closed down in 2022, a year-on-year -year decrease of 33.3%. As a result, some network programmers have switched to food delivery. Currently, the monthly salary of college graduates recruited by Chinese software companies is less than 10,000 yuan. Many Chinese netizens recently have made videos saying that they were programmers, but they were recently fired due to the company's bankruptcy. On the Douyin platform, a podcaster said, I was laid off. At the age of 30, I had escaped three layoffs in two years. But this time it was my turn. From graduating from college to now, I have been a programmer for seven years, five years in Beijing and two years in Shanghai. I have experienced the internet industry from random selection at the beginning to the current wave of layoffs. From receiving the notice to the interview, it is over in half an hour. In addition, one of the 41-year-old programmers said that he had submitted four to five hundred resumes, but they all came to nothing. One Chinese netizen said that in order to save expenses, many companies now recruit young people whose salary is four times lower than that of old programmers. Lenny King, a celebrity in Taiwan's software industry and CEO of a technology company, said in an interview with Radio Free Asia that programmers have high incomes, but technology updates very quickly. If they cannot keep up, they will easily be eliminated. In mainland China, the internet industry has developed rapidly in the past decade or so. 
However, in recent years, the Chinese authorities have suppressed internet companies, resulting in the collapse of many companies. He said, internet companies have prospered in the previous 10 years, but in the past three years, Xi Jinping has suppressed them, so the entire internet industry has begun to shrink. According to Mr. Liu, a scholar in Shaoxing, Zhujiang, the current widespread unemployment in China, especially in the declining internet industry, is closely related to the Sino-US trade war and pandemic-related policies. He said, being anti-Japanese, anti-Korean and anti-American has driven away foreign companies. The economy is sluggish, there are fewer jobs, and the unemployment rate is high. The programmers are affected under the influence of xenophobic thinking in the context of the overall economic downturn. Mr. Liu said that many programmers are currently fired at the age of 35. For a long time, China's job market has had irrational age discrimination. It is limited to 35 years old, and you will not be wanted after 35 years old. This reason is when the government implemented the civil service system, it set an age limit of 35 years for civil servant recruitment, and many companies followed suit. Currently, Shanghai Internet companies are recruiting IT practitioners who are fresh graduates from higher degrees with a monthly salary of 12,000 yuan and fresh graduates from university with a monthly salary of 8,000 to 10,000 yuan. Those working in the medical and financial industries earn between 5,000 and 6,000 yuan. These figures are equivalent to 30% of three years ago. Chinese car manufacturers in a continuous shutdown, difficulty in car repairs may become the norm. The closure of mainland car factories has raised concerns among car owners as they struggle to find car parts, making car repairs a significant challenge. He Xing, the director of the Quality Assurance Department at the Defective Product Management Center of the State Administration for Market Regulation, noted that more than 40 car brands have exited the Chinese market, filed for bankruptcy, or ceased operations in the past five years. This has a greater impact on consumers than the closure of 4S dealerships. Despite the Chinese government's requirement for manufacturers to ensure a 10-year supply of parts after a car model is discontinued, enforcing this rule is challenging, especially when car brands and dealerships face financial troubles. Even if another entity takes over, consumers are more likely to encounter parts shortages, particularly for less common models. Consequently, part availability cannot be guaranteed after a car factory goes bankrupt. One car owner expressed concerns, saying, Since Guang Fike went bankrupt, I've become more cautious while driving due to fear of accidents. The lack of spare parts makes necessary repairs unaffordable. Before Guang Fike's bankruptcy, there were over 200 dealerships nationwide, but now only a few dozen operate normally, forcing some car owners to travel long distances for repairs. Since October 2022, the Qingpu District Consumer Protection Committee in Shanghai has received nearly 90 complaints about WM Motor, citing operational issues, store closures, and difficulties in obtaining car parts. He Xing predicts that difficulties in getting car repairs done may become the new norm. Collaboration with CCP to remove banned apps? Experts, Apple's nightmare won't end here. Apple is currently in an embarrassing situation where it may have to cooperate with the Chinese government to remove tens of thousands of Western applications from the Chinese App Store. This statement was made by Liu Liping, who once served as a content censor for China's Sino Weibo and currently serves as the editor of China Digital Times, during an interview with Voice of America VOA. According to Liu, despite Apple's willingness to cooperate with Beijing's censorship even in the face of criticism from Western nations, it has still been unable to earn the trust of the Chinese Communist Party government. Against the backdrop of strained relations between the United States and China, the iPhone has become a thorn in the side of the Chinese government. Liu remarked, if Apple wishes to avoid becoming like Chinese companies that efficiently adhere to official censorship demands, it won't be long before those top apps are removed. The Chinese authorities introduced the regulation on the management of mobile internet application information services in August of the previous year. This regulation mandates that platforms distributing apps must register with the Cyberspace Administration of China, CAC. 
However, when the CAC published its initial list of application distribution platform names and registration numbers on September 27, it was observed that the Apple Incorporated's App Store was absent from the list. Observers believe that the primary reason is due to the fact that Apple's App Store offers a multitude of apps officially banned in mainland China. These include Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and WhatsApp. Users who have downloaded these apps on their iPhones can still access these services by using virtual private networks, VPNs, to connect to foreign internet servers. The new Chinese internet management regulations are, to a significant extent, aimed at preventing Chinese netizens from using their smartphones to circumvent the Great Firewall and access prohibited overseas apps. Earlier, the Wall Street Journal had reported on October 2 that Apple executives had engaged in multiple meetings with Chinese officials in recent months to voice their concerns about the new regulations. Due to the fact that numerous Western apps offered in Apple's iPhone App Store in China have not undergone the mandatory filing process with Chinese authorities, and it is unlikely that these Western companies will comply with the Chinese government's filing requirements, the new regulations dictate that Apple's App Store will need to remove these apps. Sources have indicated that Chinese officials have communicated to Apple the necessity of rigorously enforcing rules that prohibit unregistered foreign applications. Meanwhile, Apple has expressed concerns about the implementation of these rules and their potential impact on users. The relevant report from VOA quoted comments from Alexandra Gadzilla Terziu, the CEO of Magpie Advisory, a consultancy specializing in geopolitical crises and public affairs. Terziu emphasized that the recent pressure placed on Apple Incorporated by the Chinese Communist authorities is primarily driven by political motives rather than economic ones. Some analysts have pointed out that, despite Apple's long-standing compliance with various demands and restrictions imposed by the Chinese Communist government, it still falls short of satisfying Beijing's expectations regarding censorship when compared to Chinese companies. Sam Howell, an assistant research fellow in the Technology and National Security Program at the Center for a New American Security, CNAS, candidly conveyed to VOA that Beijing's actions aim to replace foreign technology with products developed by domestic manufacturers and to close the loophole that allows Chinese iPhone users to download Western social media apps that are officially banned. Howell cautioned that Apple's future in China may become increasingly challenging as the Chinese Communist authorities have shown a strong desire to enhance government control over data and digital services. He believes that Apple is likely to be drawn into a political dispute between the United States and China. He also emphasized that, in the coming days, Apple will need to find a way to address dissatisfaction from various quarters. On one side, there are Chinese allegations that Apple isn't sufficiently filtering and censoring content. On the other side, there's pressure from Western public opinion that criticizes Apple for complying with Communist Party censorship and urges Apple to uphold its commitment to freedom of speech, privacy, and human rights. U.S. blacklists 42 Chinese entities for aiding Russia's defense industry. The U.S. Department of Commerce stated on October 6 that it has added 42 Chinese entities to the export control list for allegedly supplying Russia's military and defense industry with integrated circuits that originated in the United States. A total of 49 entities were added to the entity list. Of these, 42 were based in China, and the rest were based in Estonia, Finland, Germany, India, Turkey, the United Arab Emirates, and the UK. According to the department, these companies were accused of providing Russia with microelectronics that it uses for precision guidance systems in missiles and drones launched against civilian targets in Ukraine. Alan Estevez, Under Secretary of Commerce for Industry and Security, said the United States won't hesitate to act against parties that facilitate the sale of U.S. origin items to Russia's military for its war against Ukraine. Mr. Estevez said in a statement, no matter how convoluted the trail may be or how many hands items are passing through, if U.S. origin items are finding their way to Russia's military, we will work tirelessly to stop it. Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Export Administration Thea Rosman Kendler said the 49 blacklisted entities accounted for a significant portion of the U.S. origin integrated circuits that were shipped to Russia from March through July. 
Companies are added to the entity list when Washington deems that they pose a threat to U.S. national security or foreign policy. Suppliers will need to apply for a special license, which is generally hard to obtain, in order to ship goods to entities on the list. Assistant Secretary for Export Enforcement Matthew Axelrod said, Today's additions to the entity list provide a clear message. If you supply the Russian defense sector with U.S. origin technology, we will find out, and we will take action. But we also need the help of industry. We need you to exercise extra caution when shipping high-priority items to customers abroad to help ensure those customers aren't then funneling those items to Russian missile and drone programs. The United States has been using the entity list to target China's tech sector and attempt to stymie Russia's efforts in its war in Ukraine. Last month, the department added 11 Chinese and 5 Russian companies to the entity list for supplying components to make drones for the Russian army. China likely providing support to Russia's military According to an unclassified report compiled by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence in July, China's communist regime is likely providing Russia with military and dual-use technology for use in Ukraine. The report reads, China is providing some dual-use technology that Moscow's military uses to continue the war in Ukraine, despite an international cordon of sanctions and export controls. The customs records show, China's state-owned defense companies shipping navigation equipment, jamming technology, and fighter jet parts to sanctioned Russian government-owned defense companies. The Chinese Communist Party, CCP, which rules China as a single-party state, has denied sending any military equipment to Russia. However, the two authoritarian powers have vowed to uphold a no-limits partnership throughout the war. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said on June 19 that there was no evidence suggesting that the Chinese regime has transferred weapons or provided lethal aid to Russia but that there were concerns about Chinese firms providing Russia with technology that could be used against Ukraine. He said, what we are concerned about is private companies in China that may be providing assistance, in some cases dual use, in some cases clearly directed at enhancing Russia's military capacity in Ukraine. Pentagon Press Secretary Brig General Patrick Ryder said on February 24 that although there was no evidence of China's directly sending weapons to Russia, the CCP hadn't ruled out such a possibility. Don't forget to comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths, and thank you for tuning in.